Now, how this book came about, um, I have been to every single San Diego Comic Con, including the first one in 1970, and uh, I was also somebody who was into photography starting in the late 70s, and I actually had a dark room and did all kinds of you know, professional photography for various people. And so I would go to Comic Con and I'd just take a million pictures. And over the years I, you know, had friends that I gave away and did things to, and I just had all over the house and in the garage and in closets, you know, one use pictures here and some pictures there. And last fall, um, somebody just mentioned to me, there's this new company in San Diego and they want to create a site online that's just archives, convention photos of various kinds. Do you have any? Mm. I said, oh, do I have them? <laughs> I said, but, you know, it would take a lot of work for me to try to get them all out. I said, well, if you just give us the negatives, we'll digitize everything for you. Well, they digitized about 3,000 negatives, very high quality um, files, and so I thought, okay, <coughs> now I have to do a book. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I went through and picked out, I decided the theme would be focus on the people for this. So I mean, there's lots of pictures of dealers rooms and masquerades and um, other kinds of things that you see at shows, but I tried to focus this on the people who, um, in those days, in the 70s and 80s in Comic-Con, you could go and just hang out with Steve and yeah. Easter, the creator of Superman. Jack Kirby, Will Eisner, Carl Barks. All at the same time. All at the same time, <laughs> yeah. and around in a room. Yeah, and they were talking to each other. And then... All in the same hotel room. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we really were a lot freer about our bodies back then. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and Scott Shaw, who, who's here today, uh, was one of the people who found Comic Con. Don't and use that word, please. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> founder at Kenneth oh. gives me the slack. Anyway, <laughs> uh, so he's in the book, so people who buy the book can get him to sign it. Jeff Special Edition right Don now. Don Blue. It costs a lot. Director Scott. <laughs> 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 Don is in the book, so he, he can sign things, but just as a, as a teaser, um, this was a Kickstarter project, so uh, people at uh, some higher levels, one of the things they get is a calendar of photos from the book. So this is a handy way to see big versions of some of the photos. So this is Harvey Kurtzman and Jack Kirby together, uh, two in my pantheon, the two of the top four. That was that ventriloquist. Is there a fold out of Captain Sticky's head? Uh, that would be a really quite a fold out. And I ha it's not just people from comics, but people from animation, comic strips, and we've got Charles Schultz, and we've got Bob Clampett, his daughter's here. Uh, we have people from science fiction and fantasy, like Ray Bradbury. So it's, it was all kinds of people mixing together. Uh, and one of the thing, great thing about things about Comic Con those days is that a lot of those conversations between people from different uh, mediums and genres ended up in projects that people did together and lifelong friendships, so it was uh, a unique period in, in the history of comics. You've got a lot of photos of like counterculture people in there well, too. Well, right? for like instance, like here's, here's, here's Dan Klaus and Jaime Hernandez hanging out with Bob Burden. Um, that was from 1984. And, you know, this, I think this was before Evil even came out again, so it was there in the early years of Love and Rockets. That was their first album cover. <laughs> <laughs> um, and here's a picture that's, it's Al Williamson, one of the greats of EC Comics, and, you know, more recently was anchor for John Mead Jr., but, you know, uh, with Mike Royer, who was Jack Kirby's anchor, and then with, with the, uh, with Carradine? Carradine. They were David Carradine. I, 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 I always wanted to get my Carradines mixed up. But David Carradine and Patrick Culleton, who was a, an escape artist. Yeah. So these guys <laughs> were hanging around together in 1984. There's Ray Bradbury in 1974. Bradbury loved Comic-Con. He came practically every year. Down to the, you know, right before he died, he was in his wheelchair. He was having a ball. He loved comics. Especially things like Buck Rogers, but 
he would always do a very inspirational talk that was the one thing, if he didn't do anything else, he had to go to Ray Bradford's talk. There's Claremont and Frank mm -hmm. Miller. Oh, wow. <laughs> a few, apparently, it was at this time they talked about doing a Wolverine mini series where he was going to go to Japan. Mm -hmm. So uh, that was the genesis of the Whatever happened to that? <laughs> <laughs> Probably on the wall. <laughs> 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 I thought you were thinking Frank like Frank Wolf and Chris were. Yeah. <laughs> 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 in 1980, National Lampoon was at its height, and they sent a whole contingency of cartoonists to San Diego. So this is Jerry Flanagan, and uh, the guys riding on there, Spain Rodriguez from Underground Comics, and D.K. Taylor, mm -hmm. and, uh, and um, S. Gross, who oh. his most famous cartoon was the frog with the frog strapped <laughs> off on the little cart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jackie, do you, what kind of dates are in this? A cartoonist birthday? The <laughs> only things that I added besides the regular dates were uh, the dates of the first San Diego Con and pre comic book day and the release date for this book. <laughs> <laughs> so there's Carl Barks, um, the you know, number three in my top four of all time grades, and he was um, there with uh, here. You could just see Bart's paintings. They would just be there at the <laughs> show. They they would be in the art show, they'd be at or whoever stable he'd be at that year. And in, in fact that show was why Carl was had the rights taken away from him for quite a while from Disney because somebody was selling a very uh, early version of where you could essentially do Xerox copying onto canvas. Um, and they were selling like selling of those Carl Bart's. And I said, does Carl know about me? He said, oh yeah, he does. He's been home by now. Yeah. And by the I wrote him a letter and our, our, our letters crossed in the mail. And I got back one that said, well, they finally took it away from me. But he said, uh, if I worked at uh, General Motors, they wouldn't let me get my own share of the letters. He had such a great attitude in that thing. In the Comic Con's uh, treasurer took everything home from the convention and then went out to dinner with the family and came back and somebody had broken the house and stolen all the receipts, all the money that had been made at Comic Con that year, except for the checks and stuff which they put in the oven. So they never know who, who did it, but anyway, Comic Con had no money. So we did uh, a fundraiser which was to solicit artwork from people and sell it <coughs> via auction. We had a big two-page spread in the Thomas uh, Buyer's Guide. And David Strogi and I went to Carl Barch's house, because he lived at that time in Temecula. And you know, they went to lunch for us, and he showed me his private baseballs, mm -hmm. and then he gave us a painting to auction on this part. And I think that was the biggest showing item. It was not a giant one, it was like, you know, a 9 by 12 or so, but still, it just, you know, that was a, a unique pleasure to be able to just go and visit him in his house. Now, this is the song of Hezekiah, hmm. who of course created Astro Boy mm -hmm. and uh, Tim Delonian and all, all the fabulous uh, manga he did of every possible kind. And there was a contingency of Japanese uh, manga, anime, and fans that came in 1980 Somebody organized, like a travel agency actually organized a trip, and they just there was the you know, main guy, that Monkey Punch, and uh, Bona Guy, and a couple other uh, artists were there, and they hosted a party that was by invitation only. If you came, they gave you all kinds of goodies, and it was just, you know, very, um, they gave us hospitality. But you could just go in the deal with him, and he was just sitting and drawing. He's a good Kimba Kimba. Mm -hmm. I'm going here. He's got Astro Boy there. And so that was a one of a kind experience. <laughs> and here's <laughs> Alan Moore. <laughs> Apparently, I'm the only person who ever took a picture of Alan Moore when he was at Comic Con in 1985 because that's, that's the picture yeah. you see <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> sometimes with Jack Kirby in it and sometimes without. Here he's just 
captured Jack Kirby's internet. <laughs> 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 now auctioning it off. Yeah. So this is the Kirby Awards, and, and Moore had obviously kept the sign things for some time at that time because you know, they hadn't done much in it. And so, boy, boy, boy. <laughs> Looks like he's doing something. <laughs> <laughs> and this is Ellington again with one of my dear friends, Dave Stevens. Mm -hmm. They have for years talked on the phone, exchanged letters, but they have never ever met in person. So. What did Al say when he met? My son. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you knew the answer to that one. <laughs> <laughs> I thought everyone should know. This is you know, part of the kind of underground alt um, contingency that you saw in the late 70s, early 80s at Comic Con. This is uh, the Clee Man, F. Clee Man, the, the Clee Man cat that everybody was oh, so yeah. sad yeah. for so yeah. long with a black and white striped cat. And uh, which to his chagrin, he made tons of money on it, but he had been a Playboy cartoonist, so it's like, I don't like to be kindly Mr. Cat when I'm doing my Playboy <laughs> cartoons. Uh, Melinda Gebby, uh, underground cartoonist who is now married to Alan Moore. Victor Moscoso, one of the original Zap artists who also did uh, album covers and, and uh, uh, posters, don't work that posters. Dan O'Neill, so I did Oz and did uh, the uh, famous Air Pirates uh, comics that got him in trouble with Disney and a lawsuit. But I will tell you a story about Cleveland and it's like in the book all of the uh, captions are really my stories about him. Um, we, we used to have these breakfasts at Comic Con and you could ask to sit at anybody's guest table and you could sign up for it. So I was at his table at breakfast and there were a bunch of fans there and this one woman says, Would you talk to a cat from my sister please? She says, Oh she says, but make it a Chinese cat. Chinese, I don't draw some <laughs> <laughs> uh, stri stripey guys, that's all I draw. Please don't believe so I hand it to her. It's two stripy guys tied together at the end. <laughs> 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 he was just one of the, the cleverest persons I've ever met. And <laughs> most people that, you know, if you're around uh, cartoonists a lot, they get asked a lot of the same questions and you hear the same answer. He always had a different answer every time somebody asked the same question. Mm -hmm. Okay, here's Tom Krampus hanging out. Adam West, <laughs> who is Batman, Kirk Allen, who is Superman in serials, and two science fiction authors, Larry like Nevin and Jerry Cornell. So those, I love those combinations that would happen just hanging out at parties. That one was uh, 1980 as well. Now, speaking of your favorite, your Captain Sticky. <laughs> Captain Sticky. Here's Captain Sticky. The John and Jim. This is Alex Pope. Yeah. It's not Top, it's Pope. And there's Duranko. Getting yeah, partying uh, at Comic Con. It was 1979 that you thought it was. That may be the only photo of Captain Sticky where he's not surrounded by by Russ Meyer purporting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't put any of those in the book. I wanted to, didn't want to, you know, bring down the level of class. <laughs> bring up the circulation. <laughs> this is when Julia Schwartz received an Ink Pot Award, Ray Bradbury presented it. So during the course of the presentation, Sergio would do drawings and, you know, you know how quick it is, quick um. Sergio is, he'd be doing his quick drawings, so there's, he did a drawing of, of Julius, you know, becoming Superman. Well, Harlan Allison comes running up on stage and he says, Julius, since you're giving us a word and everything, I want to take this opportunity to give you that Batman script, was it Batman? Batman, Batman oh. script that I've been promising you for years and years and years and made a big thing about it. And, you know, Turns out it was a blank paper, and he really had not We published it. <laughs> the blank paper. paper. Yeah. It was and published in the third uh, <laughs> volume of Stranko's history. <laughs> 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 to, uh, to wrap up the December uh, 2015 calendar, I, I always love to use this photo of Jack and Ross Kirby. Oh. Mm -hmm. this, um, there was a band called Seduction of the Innocent oh. that was put together just for Comic-Con and consisted of, consisted of Bill Mooney and uh, Max Allen Collins, Miguel Farrar, and Steve Leoloa. And they wrote a song called King Jack that 
they would play, and that's what they're dancing to out in the dance room. So that's, those are some samplings of uh, photos that are in the book. Um, back here we have um, Dick Schuster and Dick Siegel. We've got Stanley with Kim Shooter, with Andy Heaney, um, with Clarence Nance, the voice of Donald Duck. He called me a few times as Donald Duck. Seven o'clock in the morning. Oh, so it's always fun to uh, to be the representative for Comic Con in those days because I was the only one that people knew was at home because I was a freelancer. So if somebody wanted to call Comic Con with questions, everybody else was like full time people who couldn't be reached till eight o'clock at night. So I get the phone calls. So. Anyway, does anybody have any questions about books? The, uh, the original project you mentioned about the website that was going to be, that was looking for... It's called Webbel. W-E-B-B-L-E. -E. -E. Okay. And uh, it's a very ambitious project because they, one of the things they're doing is uh, it's kind of a virtual convention. If everybody's at a convention and they all um, are, they can all be uploading audio, video mm -hmm. stuff to the site for that convention, right. the Webbel. And they can also, it also has a GPS type thing where it, they will triangulate in the hall so you can find a booth, you can find a kid that you lost. It's, it's a very <laughs> ambitious type thing. Mm -hmm. so, that's it. so it's webble.com. And yeah, because uh, Amanda, we were talking about the like, cosplay. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, <laughs> what? What? <laughs> no, but, uh, you know, that, but you were saying like you didn't put a lot of the costume stuff, but but in the ar there on their archives for uh, all oh, the yeah. conventions, there'll be a lot of costumes. Yeah, if you go there now, they've got all kinds of uh, photos and stuff from mm -hmm. a lot of different shows with you know cosplay. And, you know, got a lot from the Of course. Yeah. Was there a part where the photos were originally black and white, then you switched to color, or were they all color originally? Um, they were all black and white with just some color. So there was, if there I, I'm certain that there's some negatives I have not found yet, because <laughs> it seemed like a couple of years were really skimpy. But um, there were a couple of years that I had a lot of color, and so I made a point. There is this black and white book. And I had a dark room, so I developed all my own stuff. So I, I was going to do black and white, I wasn't going to do color. But I do have a color section, and uh, so I, I tried to put photos in that color was what made it. You know, the Bob, King, Bob King, yeah. King drawing Batman and Robin, and uh, you know, Jack uh, Harvey Kurtzman with a whole bunch of underground cartoonists, and they all have Hawaiian shirts on. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, Katie King's boss man, Bill Wagon, with his Katie King tie, mm -hmm. things of that nature. So, um, so yeah, there's 16 pages of color in here. And not 100% of the photos are from San Diego because I also went to some science fiction and NC type shows in the 70s. So there's some stuff from Worldcon. There's a lot of uh, science fiction links that are in here that I uh, never came to San Diego Con, but I you know, managed to get photos of them at other shows. But, I, you know, people who did come, Robert Heinlein, uh, Derek Sturgeon, you know, all the, all the real biggies of science fiction. So, anybody else have a question? I think we're going to have some... I want one more question. Oh, one Any people that <laughs> you wish for the photograph that you weren't able to photograph? Or who weren't able to make the conventions or something? Well, it's, no, it's, it's weird that there's some people that I know were there every year, but somehow I don't have a photo from that period. Like Bud Plant was one of the jurors wow. every year, but I have pictures of his booth, but not him. And then Paul Levitt, I just have a picture in here that's the back of his head. That was the only one I had <laughs> that's his best that was <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I, my one pitch in the whole thing is that I put a picture of Mike Richardson in that was from 1991 because I wanted to see the right. book because everybody else was in the book. And it's like, Mike's got to be in there. But <laughs> the next, you know, if this does well, then the next one's 90s because I have more. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Yeah. Well, who knew at the time? I when it was, when it was harder to think. I mean, it wasn't the easiest thing in the world. Now everyone's going around, you know, we're all taking Yeah, I mean, That's I had, you know, I had my bounce flash and, you know, all my equipment. And, and, and there were many less opportunities to do so. I mean, now there's a convention. Oh, great. There are right. many major <laughs> cities. Yeah. And now one every weekend or two. Except for everybody that think has a line, so you're trying to get to the front of the line to get a shot. No pictures! Unless you're paying $20 for a picture. <laughs>